Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we are going to discuss how we can perform cryptography using Python programming language. So we are going to do data encryption and data decryption. Let us first start by defining key terms. Encryption means converting data, which is in form of plain text, into a cipher text. Decryption, on the other hand, is the reverse of that, converting the cipher text back to plain text. Now, for encryption to take place, we require to use encryption keys and we require to use encryption algorithms. Encryption algorithms can be classified based on different criteria. And there are uh, two main criteria that are used to define encryption algorithm. One of these criteria is the number of keys that an algorithm uses. And the other criteria is how the algorithm accepts data. Going by the number of keys that an algorithm uses, we can have two main categories. What we call the private key, also known as the symmetric algorithm or cryptography, which basically uses the same key to encrypt and decrypt. Then there is the public key cryptography, which uses two keys. One is public, the other one is private. So it can use a public key to encrypt, then a private key to decrypt, or a private key to encrypt and a public key to decrypt. So all these techniques, they define the nature of the algorithm that is used to perform cryptography. Today, we are going to use an algorithm known as FANET. FANET is a high level abstraction of the advanced encryption standard. It uses 128 bits of data or key to encrypt. And the key comparison between it and advanced encryption standard is that AES, also known as advanced encryption standard, can either use 128-bit key, it can also use 182-bit key, and it can also use 256 bits. However, for just basic uh, data encryption, 128-bit key is considered to be secure enough. And that is why, up to date, the FANET algorithm is one of the most preferred algorithm for many people who are dealing with data that is either in storage, in transit, or in operation. And especially in Python programming language, FANET algorithm is found in a library known as cryptography. This library known as cryptography is a third party library that you first need to install in your Jupyter notebook or whatever Python editor you are using for you to be able to interact with it. So how do you go about it? Before we go ahead and discuss how you go about it, please consider subscribing to this channel, liking our videos, put your comments in the comment section, and click on the notification bell so that you can be notified every time we release a new video. So to install cryptography, we use the method which is pip install cryptography, then you run that particular cell and it will take some time to check if your computer already has that library installed. In my case, the library is installed and that is why it is telling me that requirement is already met. In your case, if it is not installed, it will install the requisite files and you'll be able to use the library. After that, we go to the first step, which is encryption. And just to remind you, encryption is where we are converting a plain text into a cipher text. So for us to be able to encrypt, we need to first import the algorithm, which is the FANET algorithm, from the cryptography library. So we write this line of code from cryptography.fanet import FANET. Then after we import it, we need to generate a key that we are going to use to encrypt. In this case, we are going to generate a random encryption key. However, you can define your own key, but I would prefer a random key, especially in cases whereby you are not dealing with so much secure systems. So you define a variable known as key and you assign it some values. And what values do you assign it? You make reference to the algorithm that we have called, which is FANET, and you call a method inside that algorithm known as generate key. 
So this one will automatically generate a random key for you. After that, you create a cipher object using the key that you have generated. So define a variable known as cipher. You can also call it any other name that you desire, so long as you adhere to the rules of naming identifiers. Then assign it a value, which is Fanet in parentheses key. What this means is that you are making reference to this algorithm, which is known as Fanet, and under its argument or parameter list, you are defining a variable key, which is the one that you have created here, or the randomly generated key. After that, define the message that you, are, you want to encrypt. In this case, the message that I want to encrypt is this one, hello world. You can use any other message that you want. And uh, you can try with even a longer text, maybe two or three lines, and see how it works. But for purposes of uh, keeping it simple, I'm just going to use hello world. After that, now we create uh, the encryption or we encrypt this particular message. How do we go about it? We first create a variable known as encrypted message, which is going to store our encrypted message. Then we pass some values to that variable. Which values are we passing? We are first passing the object that we created of uh, this algorithm known as Fanet. And then we call the method known as encrypt, which is used to encrypt. And inside the parameter list or the argument list of that particular method, we pass the, me we pass the text that we wanted to, en to encrypt. In this case, the text that we wanted to encrypt, we had already assigned it to a variable known as message. So we come and pass this variable known as message. Now, since our key is randomly generated, we would like to see what key was generated so that it can help us in decryption. And we would also like to see how the encrypted message looks like. So we print the key and we print the encrypted message. So we can run this code by just pressing shift and enter. And here we can see that the key is this one. And we can be able to see that this is the encrypted message. And if you compare hello world, which basically has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, which has eleven characters, and the message that you have gotten here, you can see that this one has more than eleven characters. And you can be able to see that even if somebody, let's assume that this hello world was something like a password stored somewhere in a server, even if someone accessed that server, what they will find stored there is this cipher text. And they cannot make a lot of sense out of it, neither can they decrypt it unless they have this key. So this key will play a very critical role in us reversing the process or decrypting the message to get back the plain text. So let's go ahead and perform decryption. Now for you to perform decryption, you still need the Farnet algorithm. So you can still import it from the Farnet, uh, uh, from the cryptography library. But in many editors, so long as you have imported it once, you don't need to import it again. But for purposes of those who are using various editors, I've decided to import it again here so that you don't miss anything. Then we come here and define the encryption key. Remember, this is a symmetric encryption algorithm. Therefore, the same key we use for encryption is the same key we should use for decryption. So we just come here and copy this key. And then we paste it here, Control C, Control V. After that, we create an object of the algorithm and we call it cipher, just like we did when we were doing encryption. Then we come here and we put our encrypted message. We copy it the way it is. We press Control C to copy and then Control V to paste it there. Then we come here and now perform decryption. We define a variable known as decrypt underscore message and we pass some values to it. We pass the object known as cipher and we call a function, some will call it a method known as decrypt. And now inside the, par the parameters or the arguments, others will call it parentheses of this particular function we define the cipher text that we want to decrypt. But now in this case, we can see that our cipher text, we had already stored it in a variable known as encrypted message. 
So we just come and take the name of this variable and we pass it here. And after we do that, we we'll now like to verify that actually our message was decrypted back to the normal plain text that we had. So we print the decrypted message to see if it will be the same message that we had when we encrypted. So you press shift and enter to run the cell. And you can see that if you compare this method, message here, which is hello world, and the message that we had initially, or the text that we had initially, they map. So here we have been able to perform encryption and decryption. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please continue subscribing to the channel, like our videos, put your comments in the comment section, click the notification bell so that you can be notified every time we release any new video.